Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bigfoot Club. Robert Jesse Dominguez, Ash Tucker, Stephen Robert Dominguez. Believe in us. Believe in Bigfoot Club. Because we are too weak. Hi, this is Tim Clay. You may remember me from previous episodes titled Tim Clay, and you are listening to the Bigfoot Club podcast. Hey, everybody. I wanted to mention that if you're listening to Bigfoot Club on any of these platforms, iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Stitcher, Google Play, Alexa, YouTube, Listen Notes, or Deezer, please give us a comment, a like, a subscription. Give us a follow, and we would greatly appreciate it, you know. While you're at it, why don't you head over to Facebook or Twitter and look us up at Bigfoot Club 1. That's number one. If you have a story or any experience or just would like to give us some feedback, maybe give us an email at Bigfoot Club 1. That's number one at gmail.com. For more Bigfoot stories and other cryptic tales, head over and check out Matt Nab's YouTube channel, Bigfoot Crossroads and Cryptic Tales. For your paranormal experience, please listen to Crazy Cat Paranormal Speaks with John and Cecilia Clark. They are also available on all platforms. Hey everybody, Robert Jesse Dominguez, Bigfoot Club, episode 38. Hey guys, how's it going? Great. What's going on? Steven? Ash? Yeah, we're doing great. (laughs) You know? You know. Yeah, we're on episode 38. Uh, we made it past Damn. our our anniversary specials, mm-hmm. which is mm-hmm. good. Um, now we have to work again. Well, instead to of just talking about our brilliance. <laughs> yeah, probably so. <laughs> oh, I think. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the I sounded amazing. I know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, I'm pretty excited today. Uh, today we have uh, a really good guest, um, Oscar Mendoza, author. Yeah, I, I uh, I'm an author. <laughs> I wrote two books. It's one one is called The Book of the Dead, and mm-hmm. the other one is called Follow. Okay. And I'm also on two shows. I'm on uh, Netflix uh, Haunted mm-hmm. season two of Born Cursed, and the other one is uh, Travel Channels, uh, My Horror Story, uh, Night Terrors. Um, and uh, we're also filming a movie based on my, my life. Uh, that's going on right now. Are you, uh, is this in uh, pre-production now or? Yeah, it's pre-production. They got all the actors and they're, they're finalizing the location. It's going to be shot in Oak Cliff. Nice, be, uh, like, nice. <laughs> Jinx. And um, so it's going to be a um, Oak Cliff production, you could say. Wow. And I, I wrote the Man, I would, I would, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to be in the show, but I would, I would love to go down and see, uh, like it being filmed or something or yeah, we, if you we... don't get lost, man, <laughs> he got lost in his own neighborhood the other night when he was picking me up from the Greyhound station. Yeah. It was like some parts of Oak Cliff that just changed. And I just, uh, anyway, <laughs> speaking no, of, you know what, you're right because I moved to San Antonio for like, like four or five years and I came back and I was like lost. I was like, hold on. I grew up here, man. <laughs> yeah, there's like rest. There's restaurants where houses were at, and like there's like houses that got turned into restaurants. And it just, takes two seconds around here. Just to be fair, before yeah. things like change or they put in a new road or yeah. whatever. Um, well, now there's buildings yeah. everywhere. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome. You and I went to the same high school, uh, Dallas Sunset, right? I I went in eighty from between eighty five and eighty nine, and you went in ninety five. Ninety five. Okay. So we were we were probably we're stomping on the same grounds, man. That's that's kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, it, um, yeah, you know, people people don't understand something's really old, man. Like super old. It's one of the oldest schools in Dallas, I think. Yeah, I think it dates back to 1925, I think, or something like that. Or, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
I I wanted to talk about um how how you got started. I mean, I know I watched I watched uh, the shows on on Netflix and uh, Travel Channel. I know how you got started, but let's just let's let's start how you got started and how you um, came to be in uh, where you're at now with the books and the shows and stuff. Well, you know, that's a funny question because uh, I wasn't my intention at all to write books and to do all this stuff. I, um, you know, it started like maybe three years ago. I, uh, I entered the contest. Um, it was a Halloween contest, like about scary ghost stories. And anybody that knows me knows that I, I like to tell ghost stories because I see a lot of crazy stuff. So I wrote into uh, one of these like contests, you know, and they were professional like writers, you know. I'm not a professional writer. I I I, uh, I went to school to be an engineer, so I write software and all that stuff. And mm-hmm. so w- when I submitted my story, man, I had no chance in hell, dude. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna write the stupid story. They're gonna laugh at me, you know, whatever. <laughs> so I wrote my story. I submitted it right, and I said, oh well. I wrote it like, in, I mean, it was a true story. So I wrote it like around like two hours, and I didn't even proofread it. I I just sent it. And uh, like a month later, I, I get a call, and this is guy in the radio says, "Hey man, did you write that story?" And they said, "A true story." I said, "Yes and yes." And he goes, oh, "Okay, we were just wanted to know." And it's all right. So around Halloween, I get a call, and it's like a radio show, man. They they call me, and it's like you know people are hollering on this stuff. He goes, "Hey man, you won the whole thing." He goes, "Your story was crazy," and I said, "For real?" I said, "What did I win?" I was thinking I'm going to car or some money or something, right? <laughs> It was just an interview. They, they just wanted to interview me. Yeah. Like one, I was like, "Man, that sucks," you know. All this, <laughs> you know. But, but that that opened the door for everything, man. Once once people heard my story, they wanted to like um, talk to me. And some guy goes, "You know what? You should write a book, man." He, and so I said, like, "You know what? I should write a book." So I did. And then from there, stuff, you know, just you know, start, you know, start just ball rolled you know everything was you know happening people wanted to interview me you know netflix and travel channel and other radio stations were like calling me because you know that the, the story that that set it off was a story called the zombie ghost clown mm-hmm. and um it, it it was one of those stories that <clears throat> it happened to be my, my brother and uh my cousin because i don't like telling ghost stories that happened to me i like have i like telling people ghost stories that happened to a bunch of us that's what people could say. Yeah, I was there, you know. Because, uh, you know, it, some people just have, oh, I saw a ghost and whatever. No, we saw a ghost. Me, my cousin, and my brother saw a ghost. Or me, my dad, or me, my mom. So I like to end those kind of ghost stories. I think they're scarier, you know, because people could say, yeah, man. You know, I was there when that happened kind of thing. So, mm-hmm. yeah, most of mm-hmm. so all my books, I, I have stories that are just with friends. You know, I was with my friend. I was with my parents. I was with somebody. This way they could, you know, somebody says, oh, he's bullshitting, you know, whatever. No, he's telling the truth, man. This is exactly what happened kind of thing. So, and it's funny because I don't think they're scary. You know, I, I, I don't think, um, you know, like my ghost stories are real scary, but apparently they are because mm-hmm. they want to make a movie out of it. You know, <laughs> they're like, man, you're like the conjuring, dude. Because no, not really. If you talk to any Hispanic guy or, or girl, they're going to tell you the same thing. They see ghosts everywhere, you know. But I, I, I don't for me... I, uh, I guess I see him all the time. I'm not that scared of him, you know. I I, uh, I see some really crazy things, and, and um, you know, it, it doesn't bother me as much. Only it, it did bother me when I was a little kid, but now I'm older, eh, you know, it, it doesn't do anything to me. Right. Especially at night when something pulls my feet, or or I could hear them talking in my ear, you know, like whispering and stuff. You know, yeah, they they whisper and. Well, yes and no. Sometimes they scream. Yeah. Sometimes they 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 cry. You know, like like Yorona kind of thing. Not not like that. I, I could hear them like just weeping. You know, like tell them I'm sorry or tell them this. I, you know, what's funny because my wife doesn't believe in ghost stories. So doesn't believe me about ghosts, right? And then um, that's funny because I work in a hospital. You know, I, I write software in a hospital and. and Things follow me home from the hospital, and mm. I, I know this. You know, it um, it, it's 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 sad, but it's it's. Uh, I'm not gonna tell you what hospital I work at, but there's a big bridge that, that connects the parking lot to the um, main hospital, right? And and 
to do software implementations, we have to work at night. So that night, I, I was leaving home around three in the morning, and I was walking across this big pedestrian bridge. And then this little girl, you know, I was walking, and somebody grabbed my hand and pulled me. And I was like, "What the hell?" You know, I turned around, and this like teenagers, maybe she's about fourteen, fifteen years old, teenage Mexican girl. She had a big gash in her forehead, man. And I mean, she was she wasn't bleeding; she just had this big gash in her forehead. And she goes, have you seen my mom? Have you seen my mom? And I was like, what? And I looked around. I was like, I don't see anybody. But I told, you know, in the hospital, they tell you, if you see a patient or something, take them to the ER, you know? So, all right. So I told her, like, you know, wait here. I'm going to get security. and We're going to take to the ER. And she was really mad at me. Now she was screaming and, oh, you know, he goes, goes, where have you seen my mom? And he goes, all right, hold on. So I run to the, to the, to the garage which get the security guard and I come back and there's nobody there mm. at all and, and the thing is it's a long hallway you know if she tries to run I'm gonna see her you right know? right but I think she just disappeared dude and, but that happens to me a lot like like a lot a lot it happens to me anywhere especially at, at um hotels like if I stay at a hotel the older the first you know I always see things there dude always there isn't a hotel that isn't haunted, man. I tell you right now. I was gonna say I know what I know what hospital you're talking about, but I won't say it either. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> um, the Book of the Dead is that is that stories uh, from when you were little and then you grew up? The origin of all your stories. Well, no, the first book, uh, the Book of the Dead, is uh, is when I was a little kid. Okay, you know, from like four to like maybe eight. And then, or or four or thirteen, I think, or fourteen, one of those. And then it, the second book continues that, like when I was fourteen, fifteen, to like maybe I was twenty. Whenever you're at sunset, then right? Yep. Okay. Um, I am. Uh, Oscar, I was going to ask you. Um, you do you have a third book coming out? You got a third book of this uh, of this I, trilogy? I, I have. Yeah, I have two books coming out. Okay. The the first the first one's called The Boy and the Beast, and that's based on the movie. Uh, and the and the third book to this to my chronicle, like you know, my third the, the series is 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 the dead end of the bed, um, and that's the third book to the series. Um, yeah, so both I have already I already written both of those. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm one of those people that just go over them, go over them, go yeah. over them, and finally my editor goes, yeah, that's it. You <laughs> stop writing that. That's all you can do. Okay. <laughs> so they got both of them. When can we anticipate those are going to come out? I mean, just. Probably. I'm hoping to release the uh, Boy and the Beast, which is based on the movie, um, by January mm-hmm. around there, and then um, the other one by Halloween next Halloween. So because uh, you know all my fans, they want to, they want, they want to see. I mean, they want to read the stories and stuff. You know, because you know, like what separates me from other people is that these are my stories. I, I, I you know, all they're all true. Right. You know, it, it's because. This new book is about when I just got out of college, and, and when I got out of college to like when I met my wife, like that little series, and yeah, and, and like I said, these stories are stories that I was with somebody, you know, like somebody, so they could they could collab, you know, they could collaborate, say, hey, yes, this, this really happened, because I have other stories when I'm about myself, but I find those that they, you know the they're, they're more believable when you have a witness, um, yeah, so. It, it um yeah I, it, but it's funny let, let me tell you a funny story I um my my wife doesn't you know I always tell my wife I see dead things all the time she goes yeah yeah whatever you know but she I know she believes me but she doesn't want to believe me kind of thing you know <laughs> and and one day I got home from work man and it's it, you know my car smelled like smoke dude you know I I don't know if you ever smell like a uh, burnt wire mm-hmm. you know. It, yeah. it, 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 it's a particular smell, man. You know, it, it's like a speaker wire kind of smell. So I was smelling around my car. And, and, and my car's pretty brand new, dude. It, there shouldn't be anything wrong with my car. So, you know, I ignored it. I came home and I walked into my living room. I still smelled this, like, like burnt meat, burnt wire kind of smell, man. So I started smelling all my house. I went out of the outlets to the to the, all the like the you know the appliances, I, I tried to smell. I could not pinpoint this smell, man. It was just there, you know. 
And I think I told my wife, hey, can you smell that? She goes, yeah, yeah, I can smell it. So I was like, maybe something's burning, you know. That's just one of the biggest fears I have in my house burned down, you know. So I went around the house and nothing. I couldn't, I didn't find anything. So, you know, so I, I, you know, I just talk it up to craziness. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go to bed and, you know, let's see what happens. So I, you know, I go upstairs and my wife's asleep and I'm, I'm already in the bed. And then around three in the morning, that same smell comes around me. This time it came like, like really hard, man. I was like, oh my God, my house is on fire. And then, and whenever I said, I got up and I, I, you know, I just, you know, when you get up in bed, you just like stand up, don't really stand up. And I'm just like sitting in bed. My feet are still on the bed. And I see this woman on the corner of my room, just sitting there and she's naked. You know, she, she's a really pretty girl, man. She's, she has red hair and she's just like, her legs are crossed and she's looking at me and she smiles. But I could smell her, man. I could smell. I mean, have you ever smelled something that's dead and it's been in the sun for a long time and it yeah. smells so horrible? You know? That's how it smells like. And I, you know, I, you know, I know what it is. You know, I, I, I told it whatever it was. He goes, I know you don't look like that because whatever you are, you don't look like that. And as soon as I said that, she gets up and she smiles at me, and then she turns into this like burnt old lady you know with missing kind of like pretty cougar like like burnt burnt and she walks towards me and then she walks to the restroom and, and gets into the restroom and i said you know what forget this man i turned on the lights to, because when stuff like that happens to me yeah the minute i close my eyes they're back there they're with me so i i turn on the lights i don't sleep anymore i just turn the lights and the tv on and wait till the sun comes back up well anyways I don't like telling my family this because they freak out, you know, like, oh, you saw a ghost last night, you know. I don't like telling anybody this because, you know, I don't know if it's just tradition, but my mom always told me, when you see stuff like that, don't tell anybody. You know, just okay, they'll follow somebody else. All right. So I, I didn't say anything. So the next day, I come home and, you know, go to bed, whatever. And um, around three in the morning, my wife slaps me really hard, bah! you know, but backhands me, not with the, like, a slap. And, you know, the type of slap when somebody's startled, you know, and she, he goes, did you see that woman? Did you see that woman? And she goes, what are you talking about? He goes, that woman. He goes, w what happened? And she goes, I was asleep. And then I saw somebody playing with my hair. And, and I looked up and there was this redhead woman, real pretty. She was just sitting next to me. And she goes, shh, don't wake him up. He doesn't want me here. Wow. <laughs> but, but and she goes, but tell him that I'm sorry. Oh. He goes, I'm sorry. I killed my kids. He goes, I burnt them alive. He goes, and I'm so sorry for that. Tell him that. And my my wife's like, what the fuck? And boom, she she slaps. You know, like what yeah. are you doing in my house? You know, she she slapped me. And I, I and as soon as I got up, she said that the lady got up and she just flew away into the restroom. Like something pulled her into the restroom. And I told her, you know, she told me exactly how she looked, that she was, she was, she was, you know, she said that as soon as I woke up, she turned around and she was all burnt, you know, and <laughs> I didn't tell my wife this, and, and she, she told me the next day about this, uh, and, but we're both up that night, and I turned the lights on, and I turned the TV on, I said, we're not going to sleep, you can sleep, I'm going to stay up. And, and as soon as I said that, all the, the shampoos and the rest and fell, you know? Wow. And she goes, she's here, right? He goes, yeah, she is. She, she's, she's here. And my, my wife's like, why do you bring these things home? I was like, it's not that I have a choice. They follow me home. You know? Yeah. They, 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 the dead do follow you. So, especially if you're sensitive. You know, so your dead wife dead. saw this too, but you didn't. Uh -huh. but you didn't tell her about it. She saw it eventually, right? She, she saw it. And um, I, 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 you know, I, I told her that it, like, like days later, I told her that I saw it too because I didn't want to freak her out. Yeah, you understand? See something like that? It's traumatizing. You know, you, you don't want to. It's not something that everybody sees, you know, on a daily basis. But when you do see it, it freaks you out, man. It freaks you out a lot. And then I know I can handle it, but she can't. So you know, I try to downplay it, like, oh no, it was nothing, you know. But really, it was something. 
you know, that that happens to me on a daily basis, you know, so. This is something you can't turn off, right? It's it's on on you all the time, right? It's all, it, I wish I could turn it off, man. I don't, I have no idea how to do it. You know, you, you see those people on, on the TV that they could talk to the dead and, and do all this. Man, mm-hmm. I wish I could do it. I wish, I wish I knew. I wish I knew how to turn this off, man. I, I can't because this, this, this is one thing I can do, man. I could, I could do a lot of things. Like for instance, I um, I could see energy around people. I don't know why, but have you ever seen like the sun bounce off the cement and you could see like like this like wavy thing? I see that around people mm. all the time. And this, and not only that, but it tells me not tells me but it, it's more like a feeling yeah. like if i get near you i can feel you i can feel your pain i can feel what you're thinking not think and i can hear what you're thinking but i could feel it like if you're confused if you're scared you know or, or something uh, you know another thing i could do i could see death yeah. man when somebody's gonna die they have this dark energy around them dude and I'm always, you know, when I'm walking around, I see somebody with that, like that aura, you know, I want to tell them, hey, man, you should really go to the hospital. There's something wrong with you, you know. A lot of times, I'm 100% right, you know, and, and this works with animals, this works with, with all kinds of things. You know, the other odd thing I can do is, is, is you're looking for somebody. And if you have something, you know, that belongs to them. I could grab that and I could tell you exactly where they're at, you know, or, or point you or start walking and I'll run into these people. It's, it's a really weird thing I can do, man. But it, it's, another, you know, another thing I can do is, um, and I don't like doing this, but if you're in a lot of pain, I could feel that pain. You know, it's funny because my aunt, um, two years ago, she died of cancer. And I knew if I touched her, that it's going to jump on me, you know? Hmm. So I went to see her at the hospital and I, I gave her a hug, man. You know, you have to, it's your, it's your aunt, you know? And I, I felt this ocean of pain just wash over me, man. This like pain. I couldn't, I couldn't imagine. And then uh, she was supposed to have died like that night because she was already in hospice. And you know, we were just waiting for her to pass. And, um, I hugged her, you know, and I felt this thing jump on me. You know, and then the next day, man, my skin got yellow. My hair started falling out. I started getting the same symptoms she was getting, and she didn't die, man. She died two years later. Wow. You know, she, it, it was in remission, dude, but I think I consumed that, whatever it was, man. I, 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 it, it almost killed me, dude. It, um, you know, my hair was falling out. Um, you know, I just, I started getting those symptoms, you know, like, like I was something wrong with me and I used to go to the doctor, the doctor's like, dude, you're, you're fine. You know, I don't know. There's, there's nothing wrong with you. But I was, I was getting those symptoms, you know, I was, you know, it, it, it was just crazy. So my mom goes, don't ever touch anybody again. Yeah. Day. I was going to say yeah. that and go, <laughs> if Oscar, I was going to say, if you touch somebody, go to, go to the doctor afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, what's funny? Cause when people talk to me, like if we're having a beer and I start talking to you, I start telling you everything about you, and people start like, "Tell me more, tell me more." You know, what's in this, what's in that. It's like, so I end up talking to people like for four or five hours, man. Just mm-hmm. they, they like, you, you're like one of those mediums, man. You know, it's like, and I hate doing that, dude. I hate, 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 hate. Not that I hate helping people, it's just that I, you know, there's things I shouldn't tell you, kind of thing. You know, and sometimes I do tell you, and I shouldn't have told you, you know, kind of thing. And uh, but. Yeah, that gets me in trouble sometimes, but it, uh, only because, not in a bad way, only because they want to know more, more about it. Like, for instance, I was uh, I was uh, at um, at my job, and then this lady, you know, she's always looking depressed, and I told her, hey, you know, well, your husband's probably cheating on you. And she looked at me, and she goes, I knew it. I was like, what? <laughs> well, the thing is that her husband was cheating on her, but I could feel that energy that she was throwing out, you know, she was telling me this in her, in her energy. And I told her, and she goes, Oh my God, how'd you know? He goes, I didn't, you know, I, I, I feel it. You know, it's like, it's like a stink, man. It's, it's like once you feel this energy, you can't get this energy off. Of you, I think. And this is, this is how I see ghosts, man. Whenever I'm walking into a room, an empty house, and I can feel this energy. I said, Oh man, something's here. You know, yeah. something's, 
But, you know, then I have my theories because I'm a very logical person, man. I'm not, you know, I, I didn't go to school to be a medium or, you know, psychic or whatever. I was born this way. I had no choice. You know, this is, this is not something I wanted to. Um, but I think things attract to me, man. I've seen some weird stuff, dude. I'm, I mean, some really weird stuff, man. I, I was I was telling them, man. Um, I do have a two Bigfoot stories. I don't know if y'all want to hear those. Absolutely. It, um... No, Robert doesn't care about that stuff. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I, uh, but no, that's not even the craziest story, man. I have even a crazier story than that. Um, when I was a teenager, I used to sneak out of my house. I couldn't drive, so I would walk to my girlfriend's house. And she lived in South Dallas. And the only way to get there only safest way to get there without being shot by a gang or being picked up by police or something was going to the nature preserve. Mm. You know, they, they, there's, there's the nature preserve and there's a little creek they could take and it'll take you straight down South Dallas. I mean, it's a straight shot, man. Mm-hmm. The only bad thing about it is that it's next to a creek and there's a lot of dead people there. Mm. You know, so you, you either had a choice between a ghost or a bullet, you know, one of those two. So I rather choose the ghost because they can't, you know, they can't hurt you. Well, they, yes, well, yes, they can, and no, they can't, kind of thing. But let me tell you the story. Okay, I was coming back from my girlfriend's house, and um, I was walking, right, and and I, I knew I was almost there because it was a Seven Eleven, and in the Seven, no, there's a, is it a, what was it, a Walgreens, or something? I forget what it was. It was a long time ago. Anyway, they had these huge dumpsters, and you know, I was walking by the alley, and then I smelled this like. I hit this wall, man, of smell. It was like the smelliest smell you could you could think of, dude. It was like it was like piss, wet dog, vomit, dead body, all mixed into one. It was so nasty, it went up my nose, you know. And I was like, damn, what's what's that smell, you know? And I I I, I looked around, I was like, okay, there's got to be a dead body around here, or something. And then I turned around to to look at the dumpster. And that's when I noticed it moving around. It was one of those, like, big dumpsters, dude. It was not a, like a little dumpster. You had to, like, you know, it's huge. And this thing was being tossed around, like, like by something. And so I was like, you know what? So I started moving towards the left. I just wanted to see what it was. You know, what what's so big that it could, um, it could move this big-ass dumpster? And the first thing I see is two big old casts, man, like, like, like a bodybuilder. Like it was like a hairy bodybuilder with long like legs and they were like super muscular and he was bit into the, um, the dumpster. He was eating stuff from there and I could see its tendons from its legs moving up and down. I could see its calf and I was like, what the, f-? you know, and he had no clothes. It was, it, it was, I, you know, it's hard to describe his hair. It, 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 he didn't have well. He had hair. He, his body had hair, but it wasn't. It was, it was on on parts of him, like mat, yeah, you know, like the, like matted, like like matted hair. But it, like on the meteor parts of his body, like his cat and his calves, it didn't have hair. Mm-hmm. It, it, it was like, but he had. It was a hairy person. Um, but this, you know, I was like, what the fuck, you know? Picked up a, and then it smelled me. It, it it picked up his his head. I couldn't see his head, by the way. I just saw like the top of it, and it went like this. And I was like, "Oh shit!" It, it knows I'm here. And I started walking backwards, and I ran, Oof. you know. But to this day, I have no idea what that was, man. I'm not saying it was a bigfoot, but so... or, you know, I don't know what it was, but it, it had to have been at least ten feet tall, man. Ten feet it tall. What was what was the what was the color of the fur? Um, you know, like brown, black ish. Mm-hmm. You know, you no. Know, my thought at the time, well, it was I don't know, it sounds stupid, but I thought it was a werewolf. Right. <laughs> um, the, the way it smelled the air, man, it went like this. You but know, you like like it. But you saw the it's huh? like like the top of its head, or you saw it like put its head up I and thought, smell. Thought, no, I just saw the top of his you know okay like it, 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 it smelled up but i saw his legs you know another thing that that like 
was weird when it growled it it growled at me i froze like mm-hmm. i don't know if it was i was scared or what but when they went like this yeah my body just froze dude it was like hypnotized or something i couldn't move and i and i'm like oh shit you know i've never felt anything like that and i've seen some crazy stuff man it's and I, it, it was like almost like, like a vibration. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, 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 that like, sounds... like my body vibrated yeah. and stuff. <laughs> Oscar, that sounds and like could... that sounds like a huh? like a Bigfoot incident. I've I've been in the woods several times, and I've heard I've heard you know this thing yell at us and scream at us, and uh, it's vibrated my chest, and I've 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 smelled the same things that you smelled. So that's sounds like a Bigfoot to me. Well, you know what's funny, man? Um, I had a neighbor. His name is Moses. And he lived like a block away from me. And he gave me, he told me this story in the same area, by the way, the same area. He said that him and his friends were went to the 7-Eleven and they're walking back home through an alley. In the same alley I saw this thing at uh, earlier that week. Uh, this, you know, I, I told him my story, but he told me this story before I even told him the story. He said that he was walking with his friends and then he saw this guy wearing this, 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 um, fur coat, what he called it. And and he was, uh, eating trash from the trash can and in, in uh, same dumpster. And he said that he was walking by and then his friend threw a rock at him and he turned around and it was a huge, huge man that he threw rocks and, and sticks at him and then he hit his friend over the head. And it was just the craziest thing, you know, and he ran, but he didn't call it Bigfoot. He called it a goat man or, or because his face was long. Yeah. And he had a top head. And, and I mean, this, this guy was like a cholo. He was like a gangster guy. And, and he was, man, he was literally shit in his pants. He said he went there and then got his friends and they drove around looking for this thing. You know, wow. and they couldn't find it. And um, this is a, this is the same time I saw this thing, whatever. And um, I, I had this old lady that lived next to me, and she used to call them boogers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like, like, oh, that's a booger. That's a booger, you know. And I was like, I don't know what that is, but <laughs> Big whatever foot. it was. Bigfoot. That's, what that's, I, a, I, that's a catch-all term, you know, yeah. kind of. Yeah. A booger you know? or a critter. It's just, it could be literally anything. <laughs> Oscar, whenever whenever you had this view of this alleyway, it's right adjacent to uh, the the Trinity River, right, and all uh, the creeks in there uh, in that area. It is. Okay. Yep. 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 Is this where like where the the levees you know are no longer there, or is it or the levee still there? No, the levee's still there. The bridge is still there. Um, okay. I think it's called Sheep Bridge. Okay. And, and back in the, and back in those days, there wasn't that much development there. It, it was more woods now you go now there's like apartments and all kinds of stuff but back in those days it was mostly woods and you know like like woods and abandoned houses and so because we would just see other things there we just see like like um like bobcats and deer and stuff you know because they used to come down from the trinity river and uh, all that river you know if you've ever been there it used to be a lot wilder. Now it's a lot cleaner. Back in those days, man, it was pretty bad back there. You know, um, they find dead bodies and all kinds of stuff. You know, in, in those, that wooded area, anyways. Um, we did a we did a show a couple of shows ago with Jason McLean. I was telling you about him. Uh, he's the author to uh, Metroplex Monsters, and he he claims in and that and some of the similar areas that he saw a pterodactyl or some kind of uh, flying cryptid in that bird. area. Yeah. You so, know what? It's funny. I, I, I do have another uh, Bigfoot story on here, but it, it, it's not mine. It, it's one of my um, college's, my college friend's dad's story. Okay. And, but it, it, I think it's so true because he's from, his dad's from Mexico. Okay. First of all, and uh, they're from Beaumont, Texas. And, um, and ever since back then I was into, you know, ghosts and stuff, whatever. So I went to, you know, when he graduated, we, we went to Beaumont, Texas, and you know, to celebrate with his family, you know, like all Mexican state. They had a cookout and fajitas, and we're all, like, drinking. And then my friend Chris goes, hey, Dad, you know, he tells us, he tells us that, hey, Dad, come here, come here, come here, tell Oscar your story. And he goes, story? Does he have a ghost story? He goes, no, man. He goes, tell him, tell your story. 
And his dad was like a regular Mexican guy, man. This guy doesn't believe in Jack, you know, doesn't believe in anything. So he, he talks about telling me that him and his friends went fishing in Beaumont, you know, in, in the swamp in Beaumont, that they were fishing like around like twilight, you know, it was, it was getting dark and um, they were fishing and he said he was pissing off the boat, you know, cause he was drinking. And then he says, he said, he said he saw a turtle that it looked like a turtle's head that was just going to the water that it was a bunch of seaweed on it or whatever. And it stood up and he goes, he was looking at it, looking at it. And he started noticing this thing was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And his friends were in the boat too. They're all like, just stop what they're doing. They're looking at this thing come out the water. And he said that this thing had a, he had a fish in its mouth and he stood up and he goes, well, it's got, it was a gorilla and I'm gorilla, you know, he was like gorilla. Yeah, he goes. He was he was a green gorilla because he I guess he had moss whatever. And he goes, he he and he told me in Spanish que se paró, like a like a person. Uh-huh. And he walked into the forest. And he goes, Oscar era un gorilla. You know, he was a it's a gorilla. He was yeah. much much people said he was a gorilla. And and I was like, and he said that he pissed his pants when this happened because he was so scared because it said it smelled man. It's mm-hmm. like it just consumed everything and he was scared dude and uh this is a grown man you know this is, this is a, a hard mexican guy and you know i was uh, and chris chris is a funny guy and he goes dude my dad said his french shit his pants you know and i was like damn it must have been really scary you know yeah and he, he goes he goes Oscar, I don't go you know he, it was a he claimed it was a gorilla that it, maybe that escaped the zoo or whatever but this guy wouldn't make up a story like that, you know, no way, dude, because I mean, he, he, he when he told me, he told me in his most serious tone ever, like, you know, he, and he doesn't go to that, like fishing in that area anymore, you know, but yeah, but that, that's my other Bigfoot story for my friend. That's um, that told me that. Beaumont is the, is the tail end of the, Big, a big thicket national preserve. So I mean, that's that's. There's been a lot of Bigfoot sightings mm-hmm. in that area. So uh, I, that's totally believable. So yeah, I've heard several stories like that. Yeah, people see something walking, like just a head or something like that. Yeah, and it's interesting. Beaumont. Yeah, you know, I, 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 you know, you brought up the the Latrusa. I think mm-hmm. I, um, I do have a story. I uh, when we're in Mexico. We used to go to Mexico a lot, man, when we were little. Um, and one day, me and my brother, Juan, and I, he's in my book, too. I always, he's always in my book. Because, well, we, we're, you know, we're, we grew up together. We're a year apart. And then we're, we're in Mexico, right? We're around 8 o'clock at night, and we're heading home. And my grandparents had this huge-ass tree. I mean, huge. And, he had, you know, we lived on like this, well, they lived in this, like, neighborhood with, all the houses didn't have roofs. They were all like haciendas, you know. And all the houses had like gardens in the middle. And we're walking home and somebody said, What? You know, they said his name. And we looked around like, Who the hell was that? You know? And we looked around again. And again, from the other side of the street, we heard somebody say, What? Which is my brother's name. And then the two kids with us automatically just start running. Bam! And, you know, I was like, shit, run, Juan, you know, we're both running. We know where we're running from. And then we get to a store, and the guy goes, Lechusa, you know. And I was like, man, I ain't no Lechusa, you know, whatever, dude. And then me and brother start walking towards my grandma's house, which is like a block away. And these kids were, like, frightened, you know. They were, like, shitting bricks, dude. And then, I shit you not, man, something flew over us. You know, like this huge bird. But we didn't see it. We saw the shadow like coming, you know, like on top, you know, like like flying like over us. And my brother like, oh shit. And we start running like toward the house and we locked the door and we went in there. And then we went to my grandma's house and my grandma's like, Sea la puerta, you know, close the door, close the door. He goes, What's wrong, grandma? He goes, Está la lechuza fuera. You know, the Lachusa's outside, you know, it's like, oh, shit, you know. <laughs> but I never, I, I didn't see it. But, man, you felt I it. felt you fe- it. Yeah. 
It I was mean, something outside that was huge, man. Um, but yeah, that, that's a story. So that's actually yeah, but, that, know, that's actually a pretty good story. Um, like I was telling you, Jason McLean's got a story similar to that, but in Oak Cliff. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, "Why you get us lost down here?" <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, but man, I, I think uh, I was I was telling uh, the group here, All Star Oscar. I I, I work in uh, downtown Dallas, not downtown, but uh, Dallas, and uh, one of my housekeepers is supposed to tell me a La, La Chusa story whenever I get back on Monday. So I'm pretty excited about that. So for some reason that that that. This, these stories have just been coming to us and it's just kind of synchronicity at its finest on that one. Well, I feel like it's kind of that way. When people get comfortable. It's like, well, I got a story to tell. You yeah. Know, the more, yeah. Especially, I mean, that happens a lot. Anybody, they know that you're, you're into it or you, well, I got something. Yeah. And I used to work in, I always worked in hospitals and, and uh, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> when I first started working at a hospital, I worked at a pharmacy as a pharmacy technician, you know, and I was working next to the morgue. And since I was new, I had to work the, the, the night shift, mm. which is from like at night to like four in the morning. Right. Mm-hmm. And for a guy that can do what I can do, that's like the worst thing you could do to him, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the, the first night. Sometimes always turn out that way. <laughs> yeah. It, 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 you'd be surprised how much, how haunted hospitals are. They're really haunted, man. Uh, yeah. Um, I think, I have, what was it? Us talking about it might have been with my sister just about how, you know, that obviously it's like those places got to be haunted because I mean, so many people die there. There's just so much, you know, even without that, just the energy in that place. Um, I'll I'll tell you a quick story, Oscar, and then we get get back to your story. Is that I, when I was in my 20s, I worked at Baylor Hospital and off of Gaston, and I worked for the housekeeping company, and eventually I got. I got promoted to uh, to be like uh, the, the the all supply guy. So all the housekeepers would come to me for supplies, and it was down in the basement. And the next door over was the morgue. Nice. <laughs> so every time I went out for lunch or I went out to, to go talk to you know someone that needed like supplies, every time I walked out into the hallway, they were either wheeling someone in or wheeling someone out. I go, good lord, every time. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> so I can relate to you. Working in the hospital, you know, that, with that's a lot of dead people. Yeah, so. unless there's just some weird guy that just kept walking in and out with the same body. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, Oscar, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it, it's fine. <laughs> I um, no, my, my story is not that scary. But w- what what happened was that I, I, I w- the night shifts. It's a sketching crew, so you have one technician and one pharmacist, and that's it. Mm-hmm. And I, I I was the youngest one. I was like maybe nineteen or something. And um, the pharmacist was like 26, 27, and she was really young. I mean, she had just graduated, and we are both like really young. And we were scared, man, because what happened was, you know, we, we I, I was the narcotics runner. So whenever there was an accident in, at night, all the narcotics are in, the, in a, like a cart, like a medical cart. And all these carts require signatures. Without these signatures, we cannot open these carts because they have, you know, they have, you know, the narcotics. And um, we're about to leave, you know, I think we're going to leave around three in the morning to go home. And um, that pharmacist is like, you got to walk to my car. It's okay, whatever, I'll do that. And right before we leave, we get a call. We get this emergency call that there's a big accident and that we need like so much morphine and this and that. And so, you know, we fill out this prescription and she goes, you got to run up this, you got to run up to the pharmacy, to the um, ER, like as soon as you can. So it's okay. So, you know, I got my card and I opened the door and I walk out, you know, to the left. And I don't know if you've worked in a hospital but at night, but the lights are off. You know, you mm-hmm. have to like move for the lights to turn on. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have to like, move your card for the lights to turn on. And I, you know, it was pitch black. But in the time, I wasn't scared. I was thinking about this person that's dying. You know, because they need these meds. So I take off and and I I turn like the corner, and I see this I see this guy. He's wearing like a like a like one of those. He's wearing like a like just like one of the gowns. They see his butt, you know. Mm-hmm. And he, he's standing against the wall, and he's butting his head against the wall, and he's crying. And he's a Mexican guy. I could just see because he has a mustache. He has like, Mexican hair. He's like in his 30s. 
but he was a big dude. And he was just butting his head against the wall. And then they always tell us, you know, back in back in those days, Oak Cliff was really rough. And since we had narcotics, we were scared that these homeless people might jump us and take our stuff, right? So we had a protocol. And I said, if anybody is down there to run back to the farm, he's being called security. But, in, you know, I was like, man, I really got to take these drugs to the ER. So I run back to the pharmacy and I tell the, the, the pharmacist, hey, you know, there's somebody outside. You know, okay, can you come with me? And she goes, and we, the pharmacy has a little window. People could order stuff in there. So we look to the window. And we see this guy walk by the window and look inside the pharmacy. And he bumped his head against the window like this. I said, oh, my God. You know, it's a crackhead. You know, and, and she started like, dude, he was, I'm more like, what? He goes, I goes, I have to go. He goes, regardless, he can't chase me. So I told the pharmacist, lock yourself in the office, and I'm going to run up there, take these drugs, get the security guard, and come back down here and get this guy. And I remember his face, man. He, it, it was a typical Mexican guy with the mustache, you know, his heavy, his heavy built, but he's wearing a gown. Um, so, you know, I get out the, the, the door and he's in the other side of the hallway. So I run, I run the opposite way and I'm running through the, the, through the thing. Right. And every time I'm running, I, I, one of the, one of the lights turns on, you know, cause they're motion sensitive. So I get to the elevator and it's, it's a key card on the elevator. You have to have a key card to open the elevator. So I, I click the little key card and I can hear the elevator go boom, boom, you know, and then. I could see this dude walking behind me and he's coming towards me like really slow. I say, come on, shit. I was like, hurry up, hurry up, you know? And then finally I, I get in. I turn around, that dude's not there. So mm-hmm. I you know, I go up to, to the ER and, you know, I, um, I I get to the medical thing and the guy goes, no, it's too late. You know, the, you know, the, the lady's passed away. And he goes, oh, all right, but we'll still sign for these drugs and whatever, you know? But he goes, before you go, can you can can you can you send a message? Can you read this message to this family? You know, because they're you know on the waiting room. And I speak Spanish, and um, so she gave me this, this little like letter to read to these families. And uh, I'm dressed like a doctor, you know. I'm, I got I got like a white coat and all that stuff, right? So I walk into the waiting room, and I, and I told them in Spanish that their mom had passed away, and you know if they needed some counseling and this and that and this. And then one of the one of these ladies had this like um, like this picture, you know, of their of her parents because her parents had died. And um, this picture had, you know, like a like a family had a dad, mom, and kids. But then I looked at the picture and I looked at that dude in that picture. And he goes, "Hey, hey, hey!" I said, like, "Who is that?" And she goes, "That's my dad." He goes, "He died last. He, he died on on impact." He goes, "Wait for my mom." And he goes, "Hold on." Your dad died on impact. Was, yes, and he was pointing at it. And I goes, when was that picture taken? He goes, that's when he was like 30 years old. Now, now he's like 70. And I was like, holy shit, that's the same dude I saw downstairs. Exact same face and everything. And I, I like, oh shit, you know. And his and his mom, you know, her mom was not, you know, she had just passed on. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, I get out of there and I run to the to the security guy, and then so this old black dude, you know, he goes, he goes, hold on, hold on, before you say anything, else, he goes, you saw something down there, right? And he goes, yeah, man, how'd you know? He goes, dude, it's, it's your first week, man. He goes, everybody sees something on their first week. I said, all right, well, come, you know, come down here. I think we have a crackhead in the basement. So he gets up and he see, you know, he, he walks with me to this elevator and then we go all the way down and he checking all the things that there's nobody down there at all. Like nobody. It's hard to get down there because you need a key card. You know, you can't just go like get lost and go, no, you need a key card to get into that section. And uh, so we asked the pharmacist and the pharmacist goes, did you see something down here? He goes, yeah, you know, I started describing him and all that stuff. And he goes, there's nobody out here. You know, we went everywhere. We, they had to walk her to her car and stuff. But I think it was the husband waiting for the wife, you know. That that makes and, sense. I mean, it makes sense that he was walking around it knowing that you are going to go there. And you're, you're probably like his uh, antenna to get there. Probably. So, man, but that's getting the crap on because it, He was so vivid, man. It, it was like he could touch me kind of thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I could see 
the, the tears and the boogers in his nose, and he was just crying, you know. And I honestly thought he was a crackhead, man. I was like, no, this person, because we do, we, we, we used to get a lot of, like, vandals and, and, and vagrants. They used to go down to the basement and stuff, you know, and just to try to steal stuff, you know. So we, we, you know, we had, like, all these, like, security policy just in case that happened. So I thought it was, like, you know, it was, it was, it was a homeless person, but it wasn't. Yeah. Did he ever speak to you? Did he ever try to speak to you? No. Wow. Not really. He just cried. Just cried. He did cr- yeah. It, it, it was, it was, it was, it almost like he was just waiting for somebody. He was just, you know, like patiently waiting for somebody. And at that time you didn't think it was a ghost. You just thought it was a guy, right? I never think they're ghosts, man. Ever. Okay. You know, until, in, until because you yeah, understand, look, I'm driving right on the street and I see people walking on the street and they just turn around and look at me. And, and I, I had to tell my wife, do you see that person there? You know, or, and, and they say, what person? Then I know it's a ghost. You know, <laughs> I see them. I see them like that, man. Man, you know, it, it, what freaks me out more is, is, is you know, I used to I used to help people, you know, all the time. Yeah, you know, with their paranormal problems, but I stopped doing that, man. I stopped doing that because, you know, they 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 cling on to me. Whatever these things are, they they cling on to me. And they come back with a vengeance. Um, I'll tell you um, a story that scared the crap out of me, man. The reason I stopped doing that, I um, you know, I, got, I I'm not gonna say who this was, but it's one of my friends. She you know she's a college professor and, and she's very high highly educated. And one day she calls me and she goes, hey, he goes, can you help me out? I was like, well, okay, well, what, do you, like, what do you need from me? You know? And he goes, I need you. I need a favor for me. And I need you, but I can't tell you what it is. I, I, I goes, but I need you to do something for me. It's all right. He goes, I'll do it, whatever. You know, so I, I meet her up and she has a little box. And this box has a little hole. And he goes, I want you to touch this, this um, garment and tell me what you feel. You know, because she knows that I have these weird abilities, right? So I grab this garment and, and I don't feel anything. You know, I told her whoever has this is either gone from this planet, I mean, from this world and, and it's at peace. He goes, no, 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 try it again. And so I do it again and I ain't feel anything, you know. I'm not going to lie to her, you know. So I, I go, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab it and put it next to my face. And then if I feel something, I'll let you know. And so I grab it without looking at it and I put it next to my face. And I felt this sensation of gagging, you know, and, and I, I, I was in a puke and I saw I threw the rag away and I told her, whoever had this on choked to death, he goes, it was an accident. And she turns around, she goes, you're a fucking liar. He goes, she was murdered. I was like, well, I'm just telling you what this thing is telling me. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who this belongs to. And she goes, it, it, it was, you know, it's my niece, you know, she, 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 um, she died in, in a daycare, you know, I want to know if, if they intentionally killed her, who was an accident. I remember, I don't know anything. I just know what, what the garment told me. So I told her it's, she's not here. You know, she's not here anymore. It was, it was an accident. I felt the, the gagging sensation, you know, like milk or whatever going up my throat. And, and whoever she, she had passed on accidentally and she didn't want to accept that answer, man. She wanted me to tell her what she wanted to hear, but I, I right. can't do that. You know? So anyway, so, so we, we decided, you know, we, we, you know, we, it was one of those situations where, you know, just went our ways and we agreed to disagree, you know, when a month later she called me, right. And she texted me this picture in this picture, she, it's a it's a little girl like by the window, and she goes, "See, she's still here. See, see her. That's a little picture of her. She, she." And I looked at that picture, and I I know what I felt, and I said, "That's not your, that's not your niece. Whatever that thing is, it's not your niece." He goes, "It's probably trying to get you know, it's, try, it's feeding off your sorrow, and it wants to get into your house." It was, "Oh no, no, that's my niece, right?" So, what else? I told her again, "No, it's not." A week later, she calls. She sends me another text. And it's another picture with the, with the same little girl in in the in, in like a mirror, you know. And again, I told her that's not your niece. He goes, she's you know that whatever that thing is is trying to get into your house. 
anyways so that night you know i, I try to, i try not to think about these things you know when, when i fall asleep so i i i, I usually take some night quill or something to knock myself out so, so the voices and the, the people don't bother me on that you know so then at night i didn't take none and i fell asleep and around three in the morning man i wake up and i look around and I knew something woke me up. Because if I wake up at three in the morning, something woke me up. And I see this old lady, man, in the corner of my room, wearing this long black dress with this long veil on her face. And she looks at me. And then she points at me. As soon as she points at me, I could feel my soul jump in my body. She did this three times. And she was trying to take me, dude. And then when she figured out she couldn't do it, she... she Put her finger in her throat and we're like, you know, like I'm, I was gonna die. And then, she, and then she, she had, you know, she started walking back. Then I noticed that she was dragging a kid with her, you know. And then she disappeared into the corner again. And scared, I, I scared the living shit out of me. So I turned the lights on, put the TV back on, and I wasn't gonna sleep again. I said, nope. It was like three in the morning, man. I don't sleep after that. And I, I I was sweating, dude. That was how scary it was. But anyways, I don't like telling my family this at all. The next day we're having dinner, and my little my my the, I think my daughter when I told me she goes, Dad, Dad, last night I saw a witch. I said, What do you mean you saw a witch? He goes, Yeah, I woke up, and this lady in black was walking around my bed. And she stood in your doorway and she points at your room and then she did this time with the throat. And I said, holy shit. And then my little one, my nine-year-old, he's like, yeah, I saw the same thing. I saw a woman in my room. You know, she's wearing all black and this and that, this, but she couldn't come near me. And that scared the crap out of me because I never told them what I saw. And and but it, whatever it was, it was it wanted my kids. You know, whatever it was, it was like a soul collector. Like it, it wanted little kids. You know what I mean? So I, 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 that's the reason I stopped helping people because these things come after my family, and I can't stop these things, man. In in, in the Netflix series, they show that part, you know, but I can't really stop that. I, I, I can't, I can't stop them, dude. I, I, man, I've seen weird stuff, dude. I, I stuff that no. No living person should see that. It almost seemed like to me that, um, like this lady showed up after you were trying to warn that other lady that that was not her niece. So it almost yeah, seemed like it, she it, was like vengeance or something. No, you know what she was? A demon. It was a demon that tried to try to. Cause see, they show up when when you're the most vulnerable. You know, they show up when you're the saddest, when you, when you're mad or when you're vengeful. That's when they show up. This thing was there because they're of the sorrow and it was in I, I stopped it you know from feeding on these people to me and it knew you know it, it knew but it wasn't the first time this happened to me it happened to me before so i knew what to expect and i recently um did an exorcism on a restaurant man and boy that that was horrible i don't know if you have time for that story but it uh it has happened like a couple months ago we're we're at an hour right now. We're mm -hmm. officially at an hour. So, how does someone reach out and find your books or your or your stuff? Um, and you, if you want to plug some of your social media, you can. Oh yeah, it, it, I have a website www.deadfollow.com. dot dot com. Okay, and they, they have everything on my social media, on my books, and all my shows and stuff. So it's just, okay. that's an easy way to find. All and right. all these social media. It's very complicated sometimes because I do also have a fan page. So somebody created a fan page for for for, for my stuff, and I was like, "You don't have to do that kind of thing." Nice. It's not controlled by me. It's some somebody created it. Um, is it okay if I post if I post that once I post the the, the episode up your fan page and your and your uh, website and stuff on it? Oh yeah, man, go for it. Okay, go for it, man. All I, right. Um, well, for, thanks for having me, guys. I I, I enjoyed it. Everybody, good night. Good night. Thanks for having me. I must
bid you adieu. And so, goodbye. Mwah. <laughs> and good night. Bye. <laughs>